you want to paint a portrait or perhaps you want to do some figures or you're doing a landscape you want to put some people in it but you don't know how to mix those skin tones well today I'm going to show you how I do that hey everybody I'm Ken Brandt and I'm an artist I promised you I was going to show you how I mix my skin tones and how I apply them on the canvas and in this video I demonstrate exactly how I do that the colors that I use the value ranges that I use with those colors to um, put together those particular skin tones that I use for the painting that I have in mind and do keep in mind that everybody's skin tones are different so I don't use the same colors with each and every painting. I always mix them differently, but I always have the same base color, and I'm gonna show you how I mix that. So if you are interested in this or like this uh, particular video and like to see more just like it, make sure you put it in the comment section down below. Also, uh, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up, a like, and uh, because it really helps on the uh, analog of the YouTube videos, and it gets me more views. And also, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and hit that bell notification so you are notified the next time I post a new video. And until then, I'll see you on the next one. Okay, so the two colors that I pretty much start as a base for my skin tones is the quinacridone magenta and the permanent yellow green. And what I do is I'll take even amounts of both of those colors and we'll mix those together and I use this as my base and I like to start with um, a dark color for my base for my skin tones now you can buy a skin tone that is already pre-mixed in a tube and um, I believe Winsor & Newton makes a flesh tone it comes in a tube and it's much a much lighter value than what this is here but um, I do not like to start with a lighter value for my base because I always go in and start my paintings I like to hit the darker values first the darkest darks and then I'll um, put in my middle values and then go for the lightest lights so therefore I like to have a darker value uh, to begin with to set up all the rest of my skin tones. Now you can see here once these two colors are mixed it makes for a very rich um, it's, it is a red it's kinda like a you know it's not quite a cranberry it's but it's uh, it is I would say it's not magenta it's um, but it is in the red family it's a very rich color. I really don't know what what I would call this color, you know. But it it there is um, we do have some blue. There is some blue in here because quinacridone magenta is a mixture of um, a red and blue, and of course then you have the uh, the green would be also a mixture of yellow and green. I'm sorry, yellow and blue, and therefore. Um, there's plenty of blue in this color. You're using all of the primary colors to make your skin tone or at least this base color for the skin tone. So this is what I like to start with and then I will uh, set that right here. And now from there what I'll do is I will um, uh, based on the the photo reference or the live model or whatever it is that I'm using to uh, uh, for my um, painting I then take this color this base color and then I change it so I can either add uh, some titanium white to it or I can add some yellow ochre to it uh, I use cerulean blue when I want to add blue to my skin tones. Uh, this color here, this is Asphaltum, and it's like a earth tone, a brownish earth tone color. I really like to use this, especially for my uh, shadow areas of the skin tone. 
and of course ivory black. Ivory black I use very sparingly, um, but this also has, ivory black is a uh, black that has a bluish uh, hue to it. So a lot of times what I'll do if I need a bluish gray color, I'll use my ivory black for that. So those are my uh, primary colors that I like to use. I shouldn't say primary colors, but I, these are my basic colors that I like to use um, when I'm setting up my skin tones. And then I can change it even from there. I can add more red. And if I knew need to add more red, I'll use the quinacridone magenta uh, in that case. Uh, if I want to add more blue, then the cerulean blue. And if there's a greenish tone to it, um, I don't have a green here that I would use, but if I were to add a greenish tone to my skin tone that I have mixed up, I would probably use the sap green. So, let us go from here and mix up the um, skin tone colors that I will need. Where is... Where's my towels? So I'm going to add titanium white. I'll add my base color. Now you can see now that I've added the yellow ochre, we're already getting a really nice uh, peach color. It's already having a very nice uh, effect, making it very fleshy in color. So the color that I want to uh, make here, that I want to, is my, uh, basically what I'm doing now is I'm mixing my mid-range um, value, and I really want that in the yellowish range on this, you know, for skin tone. I'm going for a more yellowish skin tone here. So this is the color that I, this is going to be my ridge mid-range value right here. So what I'll do is I'll put that right here. And from here, what I'll do is, um, then what I'll do is I take a sample of my mid value color and I will now need to make my shadow areas. So I will add the asphaltum.
And don't be afraid to mix your, for your shadow color, the, a dark, dark color. You would be extremely surprised at truly how dark the shadow areas of skin can be. Uh, sometimes they're almost black. And um, your eye tricks you into thinking it's a much lighter value than what it is. So do not be afraid to mix a very dark value. Okay, so this, this will be a great color right there for my uh, uh, darker value. And then for the very dark shadow areas, I'm almost probably gonna use straight asphaltum. And uh, mix, since that color's already mixed into this color here, it'll, it'll blend nicely. And then of course for the lighter areas of my uh, skin tone, we're gonna want to, we'll use some, some titanium white. And just a touch of our skin tone. And this will make for our very light skin tone areas. And basically that's it. I mean, when you're talking about uh, skin tones, you're gonna have your, your light areas of skin tone, your medium valued skin tones, and your darker area of skin tones. And then from there, you will vary um, I, what I like to do is then I, uh, I put these colors in and then I will start to vary my shades and I can add more yellow or I can add more blue or I can add more green or red to that skin to come up with the different, um, the, the different textures of the skin uh, as it goes around the folds and the curves of the body. And uh, because skin is never truly just one color. It's a multitude of colors, and so I like to put them all in there, and it really makes for a nice effect on the skin tone. So let us begin putting in our darkest dark, and on our painting, uh, my darkest dark is actually going to be the, um, the background. So putting in the background first will help me set up the values that I'm going to need to use for my skin tone. So I'm going to use some asphaltum and some ivory black and that is going to be the color I'm going to use for my background. Now because I'm just doing this for a um, study purposes, the canvas that I'm using is a relatively inexpensive canvas and uh, normally I like to use um, a more, what I'll call an archival um, type of canvas and they're usually a bit more expensive. But for today's purpose, because I'm just demonstrating the skin tones, this um, this painting here is is uh, just to highlight um, the use of skin tones. So therefore, I 
to be honest with you, I really wasn't um, expecting to paint a uh, masterpiece. So therefore, I'm not uh, interested in uh, painting onto a much more expensive canvas, um, just for that reason alone. Not to say that this wouldn't turn out to be uh, something nice. If this turns out to be a really nice painting, then of course I'll just I'll just do it again and uh, paint it on a better canvas. And for like I say canvas, but I really I really truly like painting on these um, boards. Uh, and my favorite is uh, the Belgium linen and I really like working on Belgian linen it's a very nice surface these um, inexpensive canvases um, I'm not even sure what this is that's that's that they use uh, on these it's not a it has a weave to it, but to say that it's linen, well not linen, it is a material, but uh, you know, I, I just, I actually don't know, I should look it up, I should look up what this, what this is, that is on here, these cheaper uh, boards. Now, um, I'm being careful. I do have a slight sketch drawing here, then it's really, all it is is just, um, it's just the, the areas where I'm going to apply darks and lights on my figure here. And it's not, there's no detail in the drawing. Um, you don't require any detail in the drawing. Basically, I'm going to paint the picture into the canvas. And that is what I do with all of my paintings. If you've noticed if you followed any of my videos, you'll see I do like to start with a, a sketch, but it's never, it's never a detailed sketch. It's just some, you know, general lines. And basically what I'll do is I just draw it on here and that helps me get my proportions uh, accurate. Um, you know, cause, and I just do it really lightly so that way it's easy to erase. Or, you know, if I have multiple lines, you know, if I, if I make, mi hit an area and I don't have the proportions correct and then I go over it again with more lines it's not uh, I can cover it real easy with the paint uh, I don't have to worry about it so I don't get too crazy with the with the pencil and you can see that this um, the asphaltum and the ivory black makes for a really nice dark uh, rich dark um, uh, color here. Now I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not, but you can see the brown and the black kind of mix, mixing together and uh, um, it just makes for a really rich uh, dark color and I really like it. It's a great color to use for shadow areas. It really is. And like I was saying, um, so I bring my color right up to the lines that I have drawn and uh, I may go slightly, if you can see here I'm going slightly over the lines and that way when I put in my skin tone color I'm actually going to create a more definitive line uh, when I put that skin tone color in. So I'm bringing one color up to the other and uh, that way you don't, there's like a, there's no gap in between the um, the two colors because that can happen when you're trying not to touch one color to the next don't be afraid to do that uh, oil oil paints are very forgiving um, 
if you're going to blend the two colors together, you're going to need them to touch in order for that to happen. So don't be, don't be afraid to do it. can always go back over it. Always. Now there's some uh, material here that's um, and uh, some red material that I'll be painting in here. So I'm going to kind of let it blend into the background somewhat. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. Just putting in some of this color here or not it's not gonna be like crazy and you know I'm not gonna fill in the whole area because like I said I have some red that's gonna go in here but I do want to get some of that background color in there okay so Uh, you can't see it, but I have a a uh, jar of turp over here, and uh, I'm washing my brush off in there. And I do like to clean my brush brushes um, right after I uh, paint with them. You know, if I'm using like like especially when it's a dark color, you know, I'll just. Uh, put in a put in the turp real fast kind of give it a real fast brush off that way I don't have to worry about it later and so I'm going to a smaller brush this is a number eight flat because um, I'm going to need to put in some of this background color into a smaller area here I will require a smaller brush. The other thing uh, working with these cheaper boards, canvas boards, is the um, it's not quite as smooth as I like. This is a kind of a rough, rough surface to work on. The um, pattern that they put into the the board, the material um, is very rough, and sometimes it's difficult to fill in the little bumps, if you will. And also, it's really rough on a brush. It's almost like sandpaper. Um, you will use enough of these. Uh, cheaper boards or canvases and you will go through brushes much faster they um, it'll wear them down to the point where you're gonna be buying brushes more often and the thing that I that I um, don't really care for about that is the uh, fact that if I spend a lot of money on a brush, I do not want to be replacing that brush, you know, right after I bought it, because that's not what I want to do. You can get expensive doing that. Very expensive. Now here I'm putting some of this background color into the hair. And we have some areas that some background color is going to go into in even smaller areas. So what I'll do is I will now go to a even smaller brush to get some of that uh, detailed work in. 
I say detailed, but it's just not. It's just I'm just filling in, you know, some smaller, smaller areas. And but this is kind of like what I'll do when I'm trying to put some detail in. I I I will use a much smaller brush for that. And again, I'm not too concerned about, you know, how if I go over lines or, or whatnot, because um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go in there with my skin tone, and that'll be uh, I'll be able to use my skin tone to define those lines, if you will. All right, so there's an area here. Okay, so we have this. So this is going to be a shadow area. arm okay so you're seeing you're already starting to see the um, you know the figure uh, appear on the on the canvas and uh, You know, once and once that's in there, you're almost done. You know, I, I say that even though it's we haven't even started with our skin tones yet, but this will go quickly. You would be very surprised at just how quickly um, this does go, especially when you already understand what it is that you're doing with your colors. So for the uh, skin tones, I'm now going to put in the darker skin tone. So here is my dark uh, skin tone color and uh, it's not the darkest uh, skin tone but it's my dark value and those are going to go in uh, you know areas that, that show uh, where the shadow begins if you will. So you can see here, I'm, I'm defining that line between the skin tone and the background using this color here. So I'm not, I'm, I'm, you know, don't be afraid to go into your background color. You're creating that, that definitive line between the two parts by because notice I came in with my background color I came in onto where the skin tone is now I'm taking the skin tone and I'm going to push that back up to the background and get rid of that gap between the white canvas and my uh, that's in between the skin tone and the background And if some of your background color mixes in with your skin tone, so what? Let it. It really makes for a nice effect. Don't be afraid to let the colors mix. Use them to your advantage. So this is the, like I said, this is the shadow areas of the skin tone. I apply the darker colors first. Do I always do that? Yes. Did I always do that? No. I have learned along the way that this is what works.
for me. There are painters out there that will put the lighter value in first. Is that wrong? No. It's what works for them. If you want to do it that way, then you just go right ahead. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Because it doesn't matter, when the painting is done, nobody's going to know how you applied what. Nobody's going to be able to tell from looking at your painting that you put your darks in before you put your lights, or vice versa. They just won't. Um, you know, and that... There's, um, there's so many ways to paint a painting. And are any of them wrong? No, they're not. Because as long as the painting is done and completed, like I said, no one can tell how you did it. You would have to tell them. And to be honest with you, I'm not really sure if people really care. You know, maybe another artist would be the only person that would really care how your process. But a person that just likes your painting, I don't think they care. They don't care how you did it. As long as it looks nice. So here I am, now I'm just going to blend right into the shadow area because it kind of does just kind of go right in there, kind of vanish. See, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not afraid to mix those colors. Same with over here where it's going to, the neck, you know, how how definitive do I want to make this line? And I'm thinking it doesn't have to be a sharp line. Really. It really doesn't. It can be a very soft edge. You know, we'll see how you know how it looks. If I want that to vanish into that background then that's what I'll do. So we're just about, just about done putting in some of these darker values. And there are some, some areas where I'm, I'm going to have to go in actually with an even darker value. So what I'll do is I uh, will dip into my asphaltum and make a darker skin tone here. And it'll be darker than that. And it can be very dark. So it's actually, it's not getting as dark as I want because I'm, I'm getting a good mixture with the with the lighter value. So I'll clean off my brush and then I can make this a much darker value. So you can see it's it's lighter than the asphaltum but it's much darker than my darkest skin tone and this is going to be um, what I'm going to use to uh, kind of mix into some uh, shadow areas here.
So you can see I'm starting to add some, some textures to the skin, if you will, by putting in some darker spots. And then we'll be doing the same with the lighter values. So like I said, do not be afraid to go dark. You can always put a lighter color over the top of it if you have to. It's not an issue. So by going really dark right here, I could almost blend this arm It'll, so I can almost lose this edge right here, which I'm kind of doing. Kind of, I'm gonna kind of lose that edge right in there. Now what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this darker skin tone color and add some into the hair a little bit. Just, why not? Why not? Okay, so there's a crease right here. In the arm, make sure we get that in there. Okay. Okay, so we can go back over those later when we finish putting in the rest of our skin. So, so now I'm going to hit the middle value. The middle value is just going to kind of, it's just going to go in between my lightest color and my darkest color, um, the, hence the term middle value because it is kind of what's in between so I'm gonna leave spots where the light color will go as I fill in my middle value again I'm using my skin tone color to go up against my background color now had I put in my skin tone value, or my skin tone color first and then was doing the background, I would be doing the same thing, but except with my background color, I would be using my background color to go push up against my skin tone color to make that line. All right, so basically, um, this is just gonna be uh, putting in my middle value pretty much in this whole area here. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll speed that up so you're not watching me just put this color in because, you know, it's just gonna, could be boring. I'm not here to bore you.
So there is some darker skin tone colors right in here. And um, in here, this is a darker skin tone color, but there is some, uh, I don't know, maybe some yellowish red in here. It's kind of almost orangey. lighter. It's not quite as dark. Yeah, it needs to be lighter than that even. Okay, so we filled in some of this. So now let's put in some of our lighter skin tone. You can see we just blend it in. Put it where it needs to go. some edges together here. Now you can see as I'm blending, I'm losing a lot of those areas that I had put in there, but that's not a problem. We will put those back.
Okay, so um, basically, I mean, really, when you look at this, this is almost done. I mean, really, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and um, it, uh, touch up some areas and kind of, you know, uh, if I see some areas that kind of have some yellowish uh, hue to it or some bluish hue or, you know, I want to uh, kind of uh, maybe bring out some muscle area a little bit more or where the, the bones are kind of protruding. Um, and you can see some indentation in the skin. I might want to try to um, put those shadow areas in and bring that out a little bit more. I mean, that's all what I'm going to be doing uh, pretty much at this point. And uh, just kind of making things, you know, uh, smoothing things out. And you can see here, I mean, just kind of like, you know, hiding some edges, bringing out some edges. I mean, that's really, once you have your colors in and your values are correct, that's really all you're doing at that point. It's not, it's not that difficult anymore to uh, paint the rest of the painting. So there's some darker areas. You know, like this area here underneath the armpit is a darker area. So I'm just kind of I'm just going to kind of make that darker. There are some other areas that I see that are darker. I'll make those darker. And of course, any area that you make darker, you will need to use your lighter color to bring out the, the other side of it, so. And this is, this is how I, I'm trying to, um, at one time I was not like, you can see how this is all brushwork and very painterly. There was a time where that was not how I painted. I painted much differently than this. So this is what I've uh, come, I've worked to achieve over time, this effect with the, you know, this painterly look, and I'm really liking it. I love it. And uh, so every time I paint, I get closer and closer to where I want to be. Now, these edges here, where the hairline is, I want to soften these edges. I want to lose, lose it into the skin. I don't want it quite as defined of an edge here. I want it a bit softer. So you can see that's what I'm doing right here. Same with over here. I want to lose that edge. Make it very soft. Yeah, just like that. And we'll put some hair color in here. 
and I'm just using the asphaltum. This is a great color, this asphaltum. I, I tend to go to it for a lot of things. Like I said, my shadow areas. Um, see, I'm using it here for the hair. So again, I want to lose these these edges. Okay, so we're going to want to put in some highlights in the hair. yellow ochre kind of get some you know, and then I'll some of my background color. I'll get in there with some of that to kind of like this area here is gonna be dark. I'm gonna lose the hair almost into the background. Okay, so now really, um, I think the finishing touch here is going to be the fabric on this painting and, you know, we're going to be pretty much done with it. So what I'll use is I'm going to use some quinacridone magenta and um, so I'll mix some of this and guess what? I'm going to mix it with some asphaltum. It'll make it for a very nice dark red here. Yeah, we'll put in some of my background color into there. Kind of makes some very nice dark. So like I said, I like to go in with my darks first. So there are some. Some areas here where I'm going to want to put in some dark.
course they'll have that blend into right into the background so it kind of disappears right into there where it's going off into. And again now when you're doing fabric you just just it's just a brush. It's just the really the effects of the brush strokes kind of giving it that fabric y feel to it. to show any kind of detail over here we just kind of have the fabric just kind of you know veer off the canvas So now we'll take some white and we'll lighten up this color that we've already mixed and then we can use this for some, some highlight area on the fabric. And these lines just kind of give it a, you know, somewhat of a fabric-y feel to it, if you will. I'm just not going, you know, I'm not getting too crazy with the detail here. I'm just, I'm just really just putting in brush strokes. You know, I've got light values and dark values. It's really all I'm doing here. To 
There's nothing. So like this area here, um, like I said, I want this to kind of vanish into the background a bit. So that's what we're gonna do. We will take our background color and we'll bring it in. Same with here, all of this, all of these areas. Just bring that color right in. We'll use it. Get some of this lighter color. Some of our background color in there. And like I said, we don't need a lot of detail over here. We can actually take our quinacridone color and just kind of mix it in there and
And we just keep playing with the colors, basically. I mean, it's, it's really all it comes down to. All right, so basically, um, yeah, that's it. And uh, so that is how I go about uh, doing a painting where I'm mixing uh, my skin tones. And um, so I hope uh, I hope you uh, picked up some techniques uh, in this process. Uh, watch him how I do it, and you can always make it yours by doing doing something that uh, you know doing something similar or changing uh, a part of this technique and you know pretty much do whatever You know, there is no, there is no right way or wrong way. There are just different ways. And uh, so hopefully you, like I said, I hope you, you pick something up that you could use in your paintings. Um, and I would be very interested to see what you come up with. And if there's anything that, you know, you would like to send me and or possibly get a critique from, let me know. Uh, put it in the comments below and uh, or send me at my email. I'll post my email uh, on the link below so that way you can send me uh, uh, any pictures that you've painted um, and I will uh, you know get back with you. So again, you know, thank you very much.